Hi, Michelle. Thank you. Thanks for having me again. I really appreciate it. Oh, so happy to have you here. And thank you so much for coming on. I know that what you have to share is really going to help a lot of people because as you and I were just talking about, uh, online dating is the key, if not the only way so many people have the opportunity to make connections and meet new people right now. So it's going to be fun to tap into your wisdom. So Jill is the owner and founder of Spiritual Singles, and I really always love interviewing her because she has uh, many years of experience in this industry with online dating and a lot of really important tips and insights to share. So welcome once again, Jill. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah. So I wonder, first of all, if you can just tell us just a little bit more about Spiritual Singles and your story about founding this website and just a little bit about it. What led you to do that? And maybe even a little bit about some of the trends you're seeing. Sure. Yeah. And there's a lot going on right now. It's pretty exciting in the online dating world. And I'm just glad that we have online dating to help people right now, because if we didn't imagine before computers, what people would be doing to connect, it would be really tough with, with this pandemic, th pandemic thing going on. Uh, so let's see, back in 1999, I was working for a bricks and mortar photo video dating company where it was pretty cool. It was, it was so ancient history. People had to come into the office and flip through books and look at profiles. Wow. And put <laughs> as tapes to watch the videos and even fast forward to the person they wanted to see, right? That, that was their person they were going to watch. And that's how online dating got started. And then they started transitioning. Uh, well, the idea of it, I think, came from there, I'm sure. And then they started transitioning the bricks and mortar to online where people could do it at home. But while I was working for them, when I first started working for them, <clears throat> online dating was brand new uh, in the 90s. And I was I joined an online dating site. I thought it was a great idea. Like, why not have a plethora of men to choose from? It's like going shopping. I'll take one of you and one of you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Very efficient. So I joined and I was dating some men and and I was I was meeting these mainstream guys. They were into football and spo other sports, and you know I don't I just didn't have a lot in common with them. Um, right. I mentioned meditation or you know show them a crystal or something, and their eyes would just glass over. <laughs> Not <laughs> couldn't even relate. And I and I really wanted someone that I, I could at least speak my language, at least have something in common that that was a, such a high priority for me and still is. So I looked online to find it on a spiritual dating site and I couldn't find one. So that's where I got the idea out of need for myself and my friends. And I figured there was probably a whole bunch of people that would love to have a spiritual dating site. So I launched it in the year 2000 and worked the day job for the first 10 years. And oh, wow. It was a long journey. Yeah. And didn't take any outside funding or anything, just worked my ass off to be <laughs> very frank and um, but it all panned out and now it's just huge and we have thousands of success stories um, over the almost 21 years now and uh, it's helped so many and it's just so rewarding uh, it's, and I should point out too that uh, spiritual singles was my first site and then I started doing privately labeled sites where third parties could market them because I kept getting approached by coaches and people that wanted to have their own dating site but didn't want to do all the work. And right. the back stuff. so I started opening it up to them. And, um, and then I got into the green. Uh, I thought, well, environmentally consciousness is really important and that's a good niche. So I put green, well, I inherited green singles later. I started Planet Earth singles back 2006. And, um, Anyway, so it's like they're all all the, there's a bunch of different sites, but they all share the same database. So the bottom line is people just need to join one and they have access to all the members. So a lot, hundreds of thousands of members um, across the world and everybody is spiritually conscious and or environmentally conscious. And you can screen and filter. We're not a swipeity. I call them swipeity swipe dating app. We're not, that. Yeah, we're not superficial like that. We have in-depth profiles so people can really learn about other their potential matches. And we have 
the match questions are really good and uh, tell so much information. So it's a lot different than the apps that a lot that are out now um, that have come along. And we're a little bit old school that way, but I like it because it leaves the control in the members hand. They can pick what the, they can add whatever filters they want. They can look at whoever they want. It's not like, here's a person, yes or no, hurry up and decide. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not like that. So it's, it's, and we get, I think we get a much better results. I mean, it's hard to say being a niche because obviously we have fewer members than the millions on, on the, the bigger sites, but ours are all targeted and who people want to meet. So they, it works. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I don't think I've ever heard the story of the fact that you worked for like a brick and mortar kind of company where people are actually flipping through photo books. So that's that's kind of fun to hear about that and imagine how far we've come from those days. <laughs> I know it's it's so different. And yeah, it's been interesting watching the whole dating industry evolve over the last 21 years. And yeah, it's been quite the journey. Yeah, I mean, I think maybe you look back on it and think, wow, how prescient I was to have started a, an online dating site back in 2000, right? Do you feel that way now? <laughs> how what I was? How prescient, how like you had a lot of foresight. Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. And it was all guided too. like I was even on a plane, I remember from Boston to San Diego, where I lived at the time. And I was meditating, which is a great thing to do on a plane because you get that background white noise. And I was meditating and the name, and I had the idea, but the name Spiritual Singles came to me. And it was like, of course, that's the perfect name. And uh, when I got home, I called up a friend and said, how do I register a domain name? I've got this idea. And he told me he worked for AOL or something at the time. And uh, and now I have over 400 domain names. So it's it's really interesting, funny that, you know, to look back on that, uh, the progression. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I think those are like spiritual or divine downloads when you get that kind of burst of inspiration like that. No doubt you were, you got a little burst of inspiration on that one. I've, I've experienced that a few times myself and it's pretty fun and exciting when that happens. Oh yeah. Well, when you're in the flow, it just, for me, it happens all the time. It's just like turn left here, go here, talk to this person, pay attention to this and do send this email now. And, and not only with the business, but just everything in life. And that's when, when we can be so tapped in like that, it's, you know, it's real, it makes life more, it's easy. It's fun. You feel guided and helped and uh, yeah, things flow a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Absolutely true. So I know that you've shared some things before, but I really feel like it's important to revisit this because I know we have a lot of new listeners. And also, even if people have heard some of these ideas before, I think it's always worthwhile to kind of take a second look at your profile, think about it, are there ways you can update it or improve it. And so I wonder if you can share with us a few ideas on how to really optimize your profile, because I think that is really a key to having more interaction and success with online dating. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's important too to, uh, to just let people know that it's working. You know, online dating is working. People are meeting each other, even with COVID happening. Um, they're dating, they're video chatting a lot. We uh, just launched a video chat on the site. So people don't have to release their personal information. They can chat with someone on the site until they're comfortable enough. And it's a good way to screen somebody, mm -hmm. and, right? And when you can hear his voice and see his mannerisms and watch his eyes and see him smile and feel the energy from him, then it, it, gives, it gives you a lot better idea of whether that's going to be a good match or not. So that's, I thought that was important to include on our site so people could just video chat um, on the site. Because, you know, when you start releasing your personal information, you know, you just want to be comfortable and sure that, because there's a, we screen, we screen all, all, every member, we do everything we can, but some still get through the cracks. You just never know. So get to right. know them on the site first. Um, and in regard to profiles, um, and before you jump in, before you jump in there, Jill, I just want to put the exclamation point on a couple of things you just said. 
So just to really emphasize this, you're saying people are still meeting even during this time of COVID. And I like that you emphasized kind of this safety of protecting your personal information and learning a little bit more about who someone is. And a great way to do that is like you're saying, use, use a feature like this video chat that you have on your site to have a face-to-face -face via video and really find out a little bit more about who someone is. Because even though it's not in person, you're actually visually seeing them, you're interacting them. Like you're saying, you can see their eyes, you can see their facial expressions, you can get an idea and a better sense of who someone is. You can see if they look like their pictures at all, <laughs> for <laughs> one thing, right? Yeah. And so I just kind of wanted to like, just put the exclamation point on what you said there, because I think it's so important and so valuable. It really is. And we have always had long distance success stories on on my network, I'll say, um, because it, it it's when someone is spiritual or environmentally conscious, like that's their one of their top priorities in life. They know that their soul mate, their soul or twin flame, their soul partner, their beloved, whoever, whatever, you know, whatever you want to say might not live in the same city, might not even live in the same country. And even with the challenges of traveling now, which it's a bit challenging leaving the US still, um, people are still video dating even across the world. And once, you know, once they're comfortable getting off the site, they'll still do Zoom or Skype or FaceTime, whatever, and they'll, they'll chat with each other. And really, and they'll have dates, like, like just like you and I are doing right now, this could be a date between two people and they could be sitting, they could be making dinner, they could be uh, just whatever, watching a movie together even, playing games online, just talking, getting to know each other, asking questions about each other, sharing their lives, like introducing them to friends and family, their pets. Um, and that way, when they do meet in person, there's already this great base, this solid base of a relationship where they haven't even been able to touch each other or kiss. And so they really have gotten to know each other on a very deep level oftentimes because they're sharing some very intimate, wonderful aspects of themselves and even like having ahas and breakthroughs and personal growth in their video chats. I mean, you can imagine video chatting with someone for an hour, two hours at a time, uh, frequently, like you, like you would go on a date with them in person if you could. Imagine that deep connection that they can create. So I do want to encourage people to be open-minded to meeting someone who might not live in their area, because if your soul, your soul knows who is who it's going to be. And there's, I really believe that there's someone that, you, you know, is meant for each person. And there might be more than one, it might be different times of your life. But at this particular time, right here, right now, there is probably somebody meant for each person right now. And so why not just be open to who that is and go with that flow and be guided along the way as to who it could be? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So thank you so much for sharing that. And now um, I kind of interrupted you, but I want to give you an opportunity to share some profile tips because I do think that that is a key to having more success and more interaction and more attention online. Right, right. Well, and I can ask you, but you know, um, what's the most important part of a profile? So don't answer too quick. Yeah, <laughs> the headshot. And I still... You know, I, I wish I could coach everyone personally somehow, or they would actually listen and follow my, my guidance. Um, a headshot is really, really important, ladies. Smile, be in a well-lit area. Uh, don't have too much going on behind you. Like I, this is a little too busy behind me right now, but it's my best lighting because I've got the ocean over there and it just takes, the lighting's not working. So, um, well-lit, smiling, bright, solid colors are good. Um, and, and, just, and just beam out that love and beam out. Imagine your, your guy, your future man is, is looking at you and looking at that picture. While you're taking it, just imagine he's seeing you and it's for him. 
that's why you're taking the picture and just smile like it's for him. Like you can't, like you're going to, you're seeing him and he's seeing you and it's just, that's it. And if you can put that kind of energy into the headshot, that's the first step in creating a really great profile. And then you have additional photos. Uh, on my site, as a free member, they can upload two extra pictures and you want to um, make sure one is a full length, a full body shot. And, and then the other one could be whatever. It could be a Halloween costume or something, you know, another just headshot or, or whatever. Try not to have too many other people in your shots. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to be focused on you primarily. And um, you can still do, and it doesn't really matter your shape or size. Um, you know, you can do flattering shots no matter what size you are. And, and also just be comfortable with yourself and happy because, you know, when I worked for Great Expectations, that was the bricks and mortar company. I would interview, I've been, I interviewed over 6,000 singles in that, you know, period of time and in seven different states, it might've even been 7,000. I tried to, you know, figure it out, but it's at least six, seven, seven thousand. And everyone I, I would talk to, it would be like they, if they were confident, you know, I could tell like whoever was the more confident ones, sometimes I would be, I would sign someone up and they'd pay three to five grand to join. It was not cheap. Wow. Yeah. I'd sign somebody up and they, I would be like, oh God, I'm going to hell for this one. Like, oh, you mean I'm taking money? I'm taking money from someone who's not going to get any luck. They're not going to meet anyone, and and I'm just shit. You know, this is bad. And and they were the first one to meet somebody. So <laughs> what do I know? And it's and that's the beauty of it is that no matter what, you know, as long as you are realistic in your um, expectations as well, you know, if you if you are, you know, whatever, just. If you're older, don't expect, to, if you're 55, don't expect to date someone who's 30. I mean, there are, that does happen. Don't get there. That's certainly possible, but you really wouldn't want to generally anyway, because you want someone kind of on your same uh, level with experience and life experience and uh, not whatever. Um, but, you know, be realistic in general. So don't have too crazy of expectations. I tell everyone to soften their focus looks wise because- yeah. Chemistry comes in all shapes and sizes. You may say, oh, I have to have a tall, dark, and handsome man. But you know what? Maybe the shorter guy is better for you. Maybe he's going to make you laugh till you pee, you know, <laughs> your pants. And you just have so much fun with him. And he totally turns you on. So, you know, great. And he's super smart and intelligent. He's like, you never would have guessed it. And pretty soon you're just totally hot for him. So having that open mind with looks is critical. I know we're talking about profile tips, but I got off on a little tangent there. No, that's okay. And it's, it's, I think it's really important. The other thing that I think is important to remember is unfortunately, a lot of people don't have great headshots. So it can even be hard to tell what they look like really well. I've had clients come back to me and say, he was actually a much better looking in person than what I expected because it wasn't a flattering shot. And or um, like you're saying, someone that you might not have thought you would be attracted to because of who they are and how they show up and what your interactions are like becomes much more attractive than you anticipated that he would. So I like this idea of softer, softening the focus in terms of the looks and maybe not be like hyper focused on a type because I think we all kind of have a type that we're attracted to, generally speaking. And so it's easy to bypass someone who might be a really great match um, if you're just solely focused on that. Exactly. And, and I've noticed too that men tend to be less comfortable taking pictures of themselves. Uh-huh. Unless yeah. they're, <laughs> then they're, then they're more comfortable. But in general, men are a lot less comfortable and they don't really know how to pose or smile, they won't smile sometimes. And so when you're looking at their profiles, that softening the focus, giving them the benefit of the doubt and video chat as soon as you can. Like if you think, if he writes a great, he wrote something and you resonate with it, it's like, oh my gosh, he's got, we have so much in common. He's got so much going for him. Then go ahead and just start a conversation with him, talk to him a bit, email him back and forth, and then get on video chat soon 
so you can see. You can right. really, you know, feel if, if, if you think that you want to continue talking to them and communicating and getting to know them. Right, right, right. Yeah. And don't wear sunglasses in your headshot. Oh, yeah, we see that a lot, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Sunglasses, they can't even see your eyes or your face very well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you want them to, you know, you let, your, let yourself sparkle and just smile and radiate out and just let that shine. And remember what I said about thinking about him seeing your picture and, you know, smiling for him, that your guy, your special guy, that one for you right now. Mm -hmm. Plus, that's much more likely to make you look friendly and approachable, too, right? <laughs> Oh, details exactly. <laughs> we don't. We, we don't have the resting face that looks like we're mad at the world. <laughs> I'll say it: the resting bitch face. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> right, and yeah, you're more approachable with a smile. They've done studies on that, and confidence is actually more uh, attractive than actually looks. Um, they've done a lot of studies on that. So the more confident you are, you can be really sexy and confident and 300 pounds, you know, it, it doesn't matter. It's just amazing when you are that confident, men are just drawn like flies. So, or bees, honey, bees. Bees to honey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why is that such a good example? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now let's go with bees. <laughs> yeah, bees are better. <laughs> yeah. Well, profiles too. Um, you know, the essays are important. I like to, you know, my site, you can upload a little video too of yourself. That's always good because you, even if you just say, hi, my name's Jill. I can't wait to meet you. Looking forward, you know, just something super simple. It doesn't have to be this long drawn out anything. They just want to hear your voice, your mannerisms, Kind of see your smile because when you animate when you talk and i mean compare this us talking now to seeing a picture of either of us right totally it's going to be different. a totally different experience right so that's the whole idea behind a short video uh and so i really encourage everyone to put a video on your profile and think of it as a screening mechanism where you can screen them out or in because you don't want someone, that's the th other thing too, about having a picture that looks like you, like you don't want to be too glamored up and have tons of makeup on where they don't recognize you, um, or you do a lot of Photoshop and change it. Don't do that because you want it to be you. And that's okay. If they don't like you, that's okay. Screen them out. Your goal is to find someone who likes you for who you are and right. wants with you for who you are, not something different. So I always really coach people to be really honest on their profiles and really say what they're looking for and share who they are and what they enjoy doing and what their goals are and their dreams are. Our, our profiles have a lot of essay questions. So people tell me it's like a soul searching exercise, just filling out the profile and, and you don't have to do them all at once. You can come back and it's sometimes it's like a, you know, you think on something and then you go back and, oh, yeah, I want to I want to answer this question today or or give a little more information on this. Maybe my favorite music or um, movies and um, shows and my pets and uh, my passion, my passions and my um, uh, what it's another one like uh, what kind of um, practices, um, spiritual practices or healing, healing modalities do you practice or would you like to learn things like that? So very in-depth essay questions too. So where people can just write whatever they want and you don't want to write a novel, keep it down to a paragraph or two per question uh, because especially these days with short, shorter attention spans, um, keeping it a little shorter, like, like a paragraph is good. The short paragraph um, is good because otherwise they look at your profile and it's this huge long thing. It's a, and just as a little overwhelming. Like even when I see a guy's profile, that's like, They've written and written and written and written. I'm like, Jesus, who are you? Like, come on. I just don't have the, I don't know. It, it turns me off. And I think it turns a lot of people off. And the men, I think, are the same way. So keep it, you know, fairly concise. Say something for the dates. You're going to have a lot of time to talk and get to know each other. Yeah. In fact, I, I kind of like to think of the profile as being kind of an appetizer of what is you. You want it to represent you and you want to share enough about yourself that it creates interest and intrigue and that someone has enough information to go on to see if they resonate. But 
like you said, you don't have to share every single detail about yourself that you could possibly think of in your profile, because otherwise it's going to be too long and it is going to be a little overwhelming and daunting for most people to read. And what I find with um, profiles is most of the time people kind of skim. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily read every single part of it, especially if it's long. So, you know, really, I think thinking about like, what are some of the key things that you feel would represent you in terms of your values, in terms of your interests, in terms of what you're passionate or excited about, like really identifying some of those really key things that you feel like would give someone a flavor of who you are without giving them the whole smorgasbord right up front. If I'm using this food and appetizer analogy. <laughs> I like it. I like it because, you know, if you have a good appetizer at a restaurant, you're looking forward to the entree because, wow, that appetizer was delicious. And I, I think that's a great analogy. It's perfect. There's a, um, I met the lady who created the passion test and and it's really cool. Like she'll have you um, write out a list of like 10 to 12 things that are super important to you in a relationship. Like if you're, if you're manifest, it can be manifesting anything. So you write like your top 10, fit, twin to 12 things of what's important to you, say in, a, in manifesting a relationship. And then she'll have you distill it down where I, f I wish I could remember the phrase, but it's kind of like, I, I can't, you know, it's like, I, I can, I can't live without this. Like, this is more important than this. Like you compare, like you look at the first one and you compare it to the second one, which is more important. And you'd start distilling it down to your top five. And if you do that, and even just, you know, write a list of 10 most important things and then really compare them and go, is this more, is this more, and get it down to the top five and then put that in your description of what you're looking for in a partner, like a short paragraph, because the first one, <clears throat> the first paragraph is about you. And the second paragraph is, is the type of person you'd like to meet. And the third one is the type of relationship you would like to create. So you want that, that helps in the type create in figuring out the type of person you'd like to meet. And it helps you, like you were saying, distill it down into those top five most important things that you just are must-haves. And, and it's not going to be as height. It's not going to be as weight. It's going to be, you know, things, how does he make you feel? Mm -hmm. You know, does, does he make you, do you feel, you know, I know when I'm with certain people, they'll bring out my playful side and others will bring out my more intellectual side. And, and certain things are more important in a relationship to me. And some, some men make me feel, I brings out my sexy side. And, you know, it's like, so I know what I, you know, what's most important to me with a partner. And that's, that's what I'm talking about when you're describing your partner, like think about how he makes you feel. Cause that's really the bottom line. Like, how do we, uh, are we happy? <laughs> mm -hmm. that's, that's the key. Yeah. Yeah. I do think that is a key to thinking, to thinking about not just what you want on paper, but how you really want to feel with someone in partnership with someone, dating someone, spending time together. And it could even be fun. I love that you've added this video feature, not only the ability to chat, but the, you've added this feature where people can have a little video about themselves, introducing themselves or saying hi or saying hello. And that could even be a fun place perhaps to share, you know, hi, I'm Jill. And one of my passions is spending time in the ocean with the sea life. I'm making up something for you. <laughs> you know, right. just... Just something, just something, uh, you know, something fun like that could be a fun thing to share in a little intro video. Right, exactly. Like, you know, and when they're, when they upgrade, they've got, um, they can post up to 20 extra photos and uh, two more videos. So they could do three. So, oh. so if it were me, I could say, you know, hi, this is Jill. I'm, my name's Jill. And um, I'll just share with you one of my favorite things to do is swim in the ocean um, every morning and I commune with the turtles and I have turtle buddies out there and I just have so much fun and I would love, love to meet a man that could swim with me and could swim a mile or two with me in the ocean. That would be a really a dream for me. And then like the next video could be a, a video of, of a turtle swimming. 
because I take videos underwater. That's and I could say that too. Like that's one of my passions is taking the photos, uh, photos and videos of um, turtles and all, all the sea life underwater. Um, but yeah, so just showing snippets of yourself. If you're into yoga, you know you can show extra pictures of you doing yoga poses. If you play an instrument, you could even have a video of you playing your guitar or drums or whatever it is. Um, you just sharing like little, like a little bit of you and like, what would it be like to be in a relationship with you? You're kind of like painting that picture of who you are and what, and then, you know, of course the law of attraction is so critical. When I was talking about how does he make you feel? That's all part of the law of attraction. And when we can imagine that he's with us now already and be grateful now as if it's already happened and you and you're very clear on what you're looking for you're it's like you're putting out that clarion call and then if he's joined my site then you already know he's he's spiritual he's eco-conscious he's you know the, all that's already a given so then you can really zoom in on the traits and qualities and common interests and 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 really find a good match mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. So that's great. Um, when you're talking about the different pictures or the videos, I like to think of it as though when, when I think of any woman out there, I think we all have different facets to our personality, which represent our interests, our passions, who we are. So I like the idea of the photos or the videos representing different aspects of you. So you can represent some of the things that you're passionate about or that you love doing or that sort of thing with your pictures or with your videos and show those different facets. And yes, then I think that helps someone imagine what it might be like to be dating you, to be in a relationship with you. They get a, a broader vision of that. And you know, they say a picture paints a thousand words. So if we're trying to keep the words under control and not write big, huge, long books, one way to add additional dimension or fill that out can be with using and taking advantage of those opportunities for pictures. And videos, which we've had the, the videos on the site since day one. I've always thought that was important, probably because coming from the photo video background where we had photos and videos in the bricks and mortar. And I just thought, I think that's a great idea. So why wouldn't I do it on my site? And Frankly, not enough people take advantage of that. And so yeah. I'm encouraging women listening to this to upload a video because it does really make a difference and it gives them just a little, and like, just remember, you, you know, if you're afraid or a little nervous to do it, just realize you're going to be screening them out or in and out's okay. Why waste your time dating someone who's not interested in you, who doesn't, you know, go like, wow, she's interesting. She's beautiful. She's sexy, whatever it is. You know, if he's like, eh. <laughs> you don't want him. Why would you want to right. be? <laughs> yeah, I think that's a really good point you're making, Jill, because I think part of being clear about who you are with your profile, with your pictures, with your videos is you want it to be a filter. You want that to filter in the kind of people that would be a match for you. And you want it to kind of deter the people who wouldn't. And sometimes I think people feel discouraged or take it really personally if someone's not you know responding or is not your type but like yeah well like you're saying better to find out sooner rather than later and I also think it's important to remember is they don't really know you you know it's it's not really a personal thing like maybe they have a certain type in mind and maybe they're really attached to that even though we're not we're telling people that it might be good to let go of some of that there are men out there for sure that are going to have a certain type. You know, if they're going to want a blonde, buxom babe, they're not going to choose me. I'm just saying, right? But I'm not going to be their type. But I'm just saying it's like if we can let go of the attachment to the ones that are not responding or, or are not resonating and think this is great because I'm being clear about who I am and the right person or right you know, people are going to be attracted to who I really am. So I think the more clearly we put things out there, like you're saying, the more likely it is to draw in someone who's going to be a good match. Exactly. And not taking it personally, like you said, I, I want to highlight that because that's important too, because 
sometimes, especially if people have been married for a long time, they're divorced and they're just kind of sticking their toe in the water. What's this like? You know, just remember, ladies, don't take it personally because they don't know you. And that's I think that's a really important point that Michelle just made. Um, and to have fun with the whole thing. Just have fun with it. How we take offense or not take offense is, is our choice. It's our choice how we feel and how we react to things. So not have any expectations of how other people should act or behave or react, you know, is a big lesson that I think when we all learn that, then we're more tolerant and forgiving and understanding of each other. And, you know, we are, we are all different birds. Like we're all birds of the same feather ultimately, but we all have different quirks and oddities and experiences and backgrounds. So just, you just have to find the one that the guy that works for you. And these, if you see something like that, you just go, Oh, wow. Well, he's definitely not for me. Move yeah. On. Right. Right. I mean, obviously if someone's putting something out that is offensive to you and is totally against your worldview and your, and your, values then it's pretty clear that's not going to be a match and you can just skip right by that so i think it's good to let people put out who they really are because again that's how they attract someone who's going to resonate with them exactly and if if we took out all his stuff then somebody might see his profile and go oh he's cute and meet him and go oh my god if only i knew you right know? He, how he really felt. So, you know, I also don't want to take out too much for that reason. It's like, you know, he's probably not going to meet anybody on my site because of his views. Um, I would say, you know, but who knows, you know, there could be the woman that's just perfect for him. <laughs> right, right, exactly. So, Jill, I know we've uh, talked about this point before, but I think it's a good one. I mean, in previous interviews, and that's like when people are taking selfies. Um, I think sometimes it's worth investing in some professional photos. Again, as long as they still look like you and they're not the really glammed up Photoshop kind of pictures. But if people are going to get by with selfies, there's a few tips that I think make for a better selfie. And I would love for you to chat about that for a minute. Super. Yeah, that's really important. Uh, well, the best tip really is to use a selfie stick. So because you want the camera up above your head just a little bit, like not way up where you're just, you're, I've seen some pictures where they're looking, like even guys, they'll, they'll be, hold up the camera straight above them and look up, like that's, that's too much. But just enough where your, your chin is just up a little bit, it's the most flattering angle. And, and a selfie stick, you don't have to reach your arm out because your arm will look like a pop, like here you can see, in the, it looks like it's all distorted, it looks like a Popeye arm. So. You can hold it up as long as your arm's not in the picture. Um, you can just hold it up or you buy a selfie stick. They're, they're inexpensive and then it's remote. So you're, it goes with the Bluetooth on your phone and you just click it. And that way you can, and take a whole bunch, think again about the guy and take a whole bunch of pictures and smile and, and have a plain, simple background. Um, it, you, it could be outside or inside, check the lighting and look at them, like take some and look at them on your phone and see how they look. Um, don't just take one and go, oh, that's good. You know, really check them out. And you might have to take 20, 30, 40 pictures. I do that sometimes, mm -hmm. and, right? Just to get the best one or, you know, and I'll make myself laugh. I'll like, you know, <laughs> do something, like I'll make some funny faces and take pictures and then I'm naturally laughing and I want it natural and just not forced, like, you know, not a, Right. Or, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Whatever. I can think of something funny and then go, oh, God, that was hilarious. And just kind of laugh a little and then take the picture. And um, <laughs> yeah, you don't want to look like Jack Nicholson in The Shining. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> or even just a fake smile. Right. You know? Want that you know if you're, you're your your eyes aren't smiling you know you're just you know, whatever not being real you just want a natural comfortable happy smile um and you know tilting the head a little is good sometimes you know just a little head tilt um and looking up at the camera just a little bit can kind of be kind of cute and flirty sometimes you can tuck your tent your chin just a little bit and tilt it up so you're like kind of like you know hi i'm so cute <laughs> I'm so cute. <laughs> you know, uh, 
play with it though and just have fun with it and take a bunch and and look at them and and if you're not good at sometimes it's hard for us to see our own photos and know if, if they're good or not so don't hesitate to ask one of your friends hey what which one do you think's the best like get, maybe pick the top five that you think and then ask your friend what's the best one um you know those are those are my best uh selfie tips uh, he, uh the selfie stick really really is the key but even if you don't just you can still hold the phone up and just hold it up above your head a little bit yeah because if you have the phone like here where it's a little bit lower it tends to make most people look like they've got like double chins and it's or you're looking up their nose or it's just not it's just not the most flattering angle Exactly. And I think that makes a huge difference. And I do think for a lot of people, it does make sense to uh, have some professional pictures taken if you're willing to invest in that, because the right photographer is going to know the best angles. Sometimes the photographer can help you be more natural, to feel more relaxed, to be more in that flow or having fun. And I also think your tip of, cre of taking a lot of pictures is also a really good tip because I don't know about you, but I have to have like a hundred pictures before I like a couple of them, <laughs> right? <laughs> so it's taking a lot. So what other um, thoughts or tips do you want to leave us with in terms of online dating for 2021 or just anything you wish I would have asked that I didn't, anything? Wow. Um, well, I just think with 2021 coming up, that, uh, you know, find the one in 21, the name of your summit here is, is app is very appropriate. And I think it's very possible. And I think that's the key thing is for women to know, yes, it is possible and it's probable. However, you, it's important to put some time and energy and focus into it. It's, mm -hmm. you know, unless, you know, especially if you're in one of these States where you're really staying at home a lot, um, you know, unless you're going to date the FedEx man, uh, <laughs> right. you, know, you, you really want to put some time and energy into it. Like make a plan. Like if you had a goal of anything in your life of, you know, a new career or school or whatever it is, a new hobby, even that you want to master, then you're going to put time and energy and focus into it. So who you might spend the rest of your life with is one of those things that you want to put that time and energy into it and create a great profile. And, you know, that's your first impression. Take some time to get a good headshot and, and be grateful in advance for meeting him and just have fun and play with the whole thing. Make it fun, make it playful. Don't take it too seriously. Don't take everything personally and enjoy the process. And that's, that's, and know that you can, you can have, you can have it. It can happen. And, you know, why not? Why not for you now? Exactly. Exactly. And I think if 2020 has brought one thing into, into view for a lot of people or given them deeper clarity is that they would really like to have someone to share their lives with. Because when we've been more isolated, there's been a lot of loneliness and a lot of feeling of, of not being as connected as we like. And I've spoken throughout this year of 2020 with men and women who are saying, you know what, I'm realizing more now than ever how much I would really like to, to have some companionship, to have a partner, to have someone to share my life with. And I like what you're saying, though, Jill, that uh, what I find for my clients is when they're being intentional, and this is not desperate, this is being intentional about putting some time and energy into it. It's like the activity and the attention and intention that they put into it generates more of that back to them. So like the more active you are on a site, the more you use it, the more you interact with people, the more likely you are to get results. Because I think sometimes um, people have kind of the, uh, you know, um, if I post my profile, he will come kind of attitude, right? Or, you know, set it and forget it kind of thing. And I think that's not the ideal way. I think actively using the site and like you said, having fun and interacting and even thinking of it as just, I like to think of it this way, Jill. I like to think of it as kind of like a virtual online party. And like if you were in a real party, in a in an in-person party, 
You might be mingling in the room and talking to different people and just having interesting conversations, even with people that you ne didn't necessarily think you were going to go on a date with or marry or have a relationship with. And I can remember, I'll just give this example, though, because I think it applies to what we're talking about. I can remember once back when I was single uh, being at, at this party and it was like wall to wall bodies because it was in someone's home and they had invited a lot of people and had a really great turnout. And I had noticed this guy from across the room. And in my mind, you know how sometimes we just make these snap judgments and kind of go, yeah, not for me, not for me. This was, you know, singles party back when I was single. And I, I just thought, yeah, I'm not really, don't really find him attractive. It, that was just a split second thought. Well, then at this party, somehow we got in a situation where I was like kind of cornered. I was kind of in the corner and because it was wall to wall bodies, I couldn't really move. And this guy was like right here, like right in front of me. Uh, this was back when we didn't have to have six feet apart. <laughs> he was right there. And um, all of a sudden, because I couldn't really move, it, it wasn't creepy. It was not his fault. We were just like wall to wall bodies at this party. So all of a sudden, here was this person right in front of me, and we started having this conversation. Well, it turned out just exactly like you were describing with someone you might meet online. He was really funny. He was really interesting. He was really smart. I really thought he was really like quite something as I had this conversation with him. And we ended up going on a few dates and he ended up becoming someone that I really, really liked. But I had already made that split second judgment when I had seen him earlier from across the room. So I think this kind of applies to online dating in a couple of ways. Like if we think of this as a virtual online party and that helps you to also have some lightness of energy and also to also have some fun with it and maybe to be open to just creating positive interactions and conversations with people. I mean, I think first of all, it can help you feel less lonely and isolated. At the worst, you're probably going to make some good friends. And at the best, you're going to meet someone who's a great match for you. Beautiful. Yes. Well said. And the, uh, you know, taking action uh, is the, like the last step of the law of attraction. Right. So you, you know, you feel grateful, you imagine it done, you bring up all the feelings, but then you don't just sit and keep meditating. You, you take action. And that means contacting men like the, when you're screening and filtering, you're reading profiles. When you see someone that you really like, wow, this, this guy could be something, then send him a message. Like, don't hesitate. I ask the women when they're, when they, and the men, when they're success stories, when they meet someone who contacted whom first. And half the time, the women contacted the men first. It doesn't seem to really matter at all. So that's another thing, like get out of that old paradigm of he's got to contact me first. And even if you just send something like, you know, even if you just send like a little flirt, like cute or, or um, you know, and the key is to, I like to ask him a question, at least like yeah. compliment and ask him a question, respond to something on his profile. Um, but sometimes you can just play too and just say, ah, cute, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just throw it. It's like throwing a little fishing line out and to see if they bite. Um, and that way you're not really, you're not being too forward. You're just, you know, playing a little bit, a little flirt online to see. Um, and then, um, yeah, I also liked what you said. I wrote down prejudge, like not to prejudge them when you, when you first see their photos or their profiles you know, just, yeah, you know, slow down, read a little, give them the benefit of the doubt, realize that a picture might not capture who, you know, how, how great he might look. Um, he might be much more handsome in person uh, or, and even if, and you don't necessarily need someone really handsome, you know, how does he make you feel? So keep those things in mind when you're looking at profiles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Those are really good tips. Well, Jill, this has been so much fun, and I always love tapping into your wisdom and expertise and experience uh, with online dating, and I think it's more important than ever right now because it is still a way that people have to connect uh, with other people out there and to meet people that potentially could be a good match. And I know for, uh, for my experience in 2020, many of my clients have met wonderful people, even with the pandemic, 
even as we're still kind of going through this pandemic and hopefully, you know, things are going to be improving in 2021, but it's going to be a process, right? It is going to be a process. And um, from what I understand, online dating is not going anywhere anytime soon. This is a trend that's only going up. It is. And, and you, what you said earlier, too, about more people wanting relationships. Um, I've written a couple like articles and for publications in the UK and such. And one of the things I've been saying are hookups are hookups are out and relationships are in. And every all the people I've been talking to, especially after being isolated and it, when you're single and you're home alone and you're home alone a lot, it can get much more lonely. You know, we're, we're used to having these busy lives and doing all this stuff. And a lot of people have been able to just whoa, slow down and take inventory. And they realize, yeah, this is really important to me. This is what I want. And, you know, and, the, and then the, how are you going to meet them? Well, you get online right now. That's the way to do it. The in-person stuff is, uh, you can't even tell what they look like with the damn mask on. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's absolutely right. Jill, I want to thank you once again for always being so generous with your time and with your wisdom and for making this work with your busy schedule and uh, really appreciate it so much. Uh, well, thanks for having me. And I think this is really important for a lot of women, what you're doing. Your summits are always fantastic. Everyone you interview is great. And I know that that they get a lot out of it. So thank you for doing this and thank you for including me in your summits. I really appreciate it too. Yeah, well, it's my privilege and pleasure. And we'll see you for more. Bye for now.